Welcome to another episode of 5 Minutes with Cyril. I want to explain today what the projective three-point algorithm is about. So the projective three-point algorithm, also called P3P, is a technique to estimate the location and orientation of your camera. So where's your camera and where is it looking to based on a single image? The only thing you need to know, you need to picture some known points in the environment. You need to have three or better four points with known X, Y, V location in the environment. And once you have those points, you can estimate where your camera is. What you're assuming, however, is that your camera is calibrated. So you know the calibration matrix of your camera. And this sets this approach apart from the DLT or direct linear transform with a technique which could also estimate the um, calibration matrix, but then would need more points um, in the environment. So there exist multiple approaches on how can we solve the P3P algorithm. Um, the oldest solution goes back to Grunert from the 1840s, so a technique which is over 100 years old by now, so has been done with analog cameras far before any digital camera existed. And the question is now, how does it work? How can I estimate where is my camera given three known points in the world? So um, what we can do is we can look to the geometric configuration that these points are is actually generating together with my projection center of my camera. So consider I have the points x1, x2, x3, which are the location of the points in the 3D world, and x0 is the projection center of my camera. Then I can generate a tetrahedron um, from x0 to those four points. So I basically have um, four triangles, um, which are described through connecting these individual points. And the uh, approach is basically a two-step approach. In the first step, I'm projecting the uh, lengths of those projection rays from x0 to x1, x2, x3. And in the second step, I then compute the orientation parameters. So the first step is kind of the key step in here. So what we are doing, we are basically exploiting the geometry of those triangles and using cosine relations in order to relate different length um, in this triangle with each other. And then I can also set up a polynomial of degree 4, which takes the different value that I computed before um, into account um, in order to set up this polynomial. So this can get um, a somewhat complicated mathematical exercise, but in the end, nothing really bad happens in here. The coefficients of this polynomial can get a bit ugly, so it's nothing that you easily derive by hand, but in sum it's not very complicated, and we can compute all those individual um, uh, coefficients. And then we need to solve this polynomial of degree 4, which unfortunately provides us with four possible solutions. And that means from three points we can only um, compute the solution up to four different configurations where our camera can be. In order to disambiguate that, we actually need a fourth point or an initial guess where our camera is, at least um, roughly. So typically we use a fourth point in order to disambiguate the solution and try and compute the correct projection length of these vectors. And then in the second step, based on this, I can actually estimate the orientation parameters of my camera so that I get all six degrees of freedom resolved for estimating the rotation matrix and the um, location of the projection center for my camera. And again, this is a direct solution. That means it's not an iterative solution. We can do this completely without any initial guess. Again, with three points, I may end up having four different solutions, and you can actually visualize them if you look to these um, four uh, different uh, tetrahedrons. And if you basically rotate the lower triangle all the way around one side, you can actually generate a second solution. And these are the four possible solutions that you can generate and for which you need a fourth point in order to disambiguate them. There's also a critical configuration in here, which is called the critical cylinder, for which your solution gets instable. So if you envision a cylinder which sits on top of the points, uh, on, on the, where the points x1, x2, x3 sit on a circle, and you have a cylinder, and on the surface of that cylinder, the point x0 is located. That's a kind of an unstable uh, situation there. You don't want to be in, in such a situation um, where you can't compute your solution. So again, then you need more points in order to um, come up with a better geometric configuration and to resolve that problem over here. But that's basically what the projective three-point algorithm is about. It allows you to localize your camera, assuming the camera is calibrated, based on three or more points in the world. And the technique that is, for example, used in bundle adjustment or visual slam or visual odometry 
that given you have triangulated already a few points in the environment, you can basically localize within this local map very efficiently using the projective three-point algorithm, also called spatial resectioning. I hope that was useful and gave you an idea what P3P or spatial resectioning is about. Thank you.